So, Spider-Man 2 is literally right around the corner. Not to mention Wolverine, a Black Panther game, and even an Iron Man game from Motive Studios. It seems like Marvel's really starting to push their characters into the video game landscape. The Marvel Universe has a ton of variety to it, and I think that games could be a great opportunity to showcase that off. Whether or not they all become part of some interconnected universe, I could go either way on. And while Square Enix's Avengers game didn't work out, there are so many other characters from the Marvel Universe that I'd want to see get the video game treatment. Oh, uh, I just realized it's October. Uh, one second. <sighs> there we go. This isn't a Halloween video or anything. Uh, I just really wanted to do that. One thing that I want from a Marvel gaming universe is to set itself away from how we might know the characters in the movies. The MCU works for what it is, but I definitely think a lot of my issues with it come with the lack of variety in the stories and the characters. For the most part, everybody just feels like an Avenger with a different coat of paint on. And a lot of Marvel properties outside of the MCU, like the Square Enix Avengers game, even try to replicate that style. And because of that, so much Marvel media as of late doesn't have nearly the sense of variety and uniqueness that I think makes it so special. I think it's part of why Insomniac Spider-Man did so well, because instead of putting him in high school again, they made him more experienced and that made him stand out. It's almost like the MCU MCU has formed some kind of monopoly over the Marvel characters. And speaking of Monopoly, this video is brought to you by Monopoly Go. Listen, I saw a chance and I ran with it, okay? Play Monopoly with your friends and your family, you're never gonna believe this, on the go, in this new twist on the classic game. It doesn't need to be the holidays for you to win it all. It's great for playing anywhere or anytime, like waiting in line or at the beach. And for me, it brings back a bunch of nostalgia of playing the original Monopoly with my family, but without any of the fights that it creates. My favorite piece is the race car, because as we all know, the race car moves faster. Roll the dice to play mini games, collect stickers and play in tournaments, play on famous city-themed boards like New York, London, and Paris, go on bank heists, bankrupt and challenge your friends. You can literally destroy other people's properties. It's really funny. Use my link below to download Monopoly Go free for iOS and Android and start rolling, buying, collecting, heisting, and wrecking your way to Tycoon Mastery. Thanks to Monopoly Go for sponsoring this video, and thanks to my patrons who were able to get my videos early and ad-free for just $1 a month. I'm going to be playing Spider-Man 2 exclusively on Patreon, so head over there if you're interested. The first character I want to see get a game is the Hulk. Now, we've had a decent amount of Hulk games in the past, like tie-in games for the movies as well as Hulk Ultimate Destruction, but it's been so long and I would love to see the character get the modern game treatment. Hulk is one of those characters that has a huge amount of popularity from the MCU, but unfortunately, I don't think the movies have really done all that much with the character. Bruce Banner is a character with a lot of tragedy to him, so much built up anger and frustration, and he has no choice but to control that or else the people around him could get hurt. The older movies, while they weren't perfect, they really leaned into that concept, but lately it's more been... You yeah, know. Damn. And so I think it'd be really cool to get another spotlight on the character in a way that the movies haven't been doing. As for the mechanics of it, I honestly think Ultimate Destruction is a great starting point. Or honestly, just an Ultimate Destruction remaster would be pretty sick. Especially with the way that particle and destruction physics have evolved in the past 18 years. Maybe certain sequences could have you play as Bruce Banner, where you have to try and find ways to control yourself. It's sort of like a stealth sequence. And if you fail, you transform and that changes the outcome of the mission and the story. The next Marvel game I'd want to see is Heroes for Hire. Heroes for Hire was created in 1978 by Ed Hannigan and Lee Elias and is a business co-run by Luke Cage and Iron Fist where they would, as the name suggests, sell their superhero services for hire. It's, it's pretty, I don't know why, I, that's pretty self-explanatory. The Netflix Marvel shows did a lot of things right when it came to Daredevil, but I think the other Defenders characters got ignored a little too much. Luke Cage and Danny Rand's friendship is a big deal in the comics, but that was never really explored all too much. And I think a game is a perfect opportunity for that. I don't necessarily think that every superhero game needs to be an open world, and I'd rather have something a bit more linear for these two. I would imagine it like a beat em up, where you go through a mission as Luke or Danny, and they each have different combat specialties. Danny's combat would be more martial arts focused, like Sifu, whereas Luke would be more of a tank brawler type of character. The two stories could start out separate before they meet up and they intertwine and they form the business together. It could even lead to other games featuring a bigger roster or even building up to a Defenders game that adapts Chip Zdarsky's Devil's Reign event. And before you ask, I already made a whole video talking about how to make a Daredevil game. It's a fun video, go watch it when you're done with this one. The next character that I think should get the video game treatment is Thor. Thor, just like Hulk, is a character that I think hasn't gotten the best treatment in the movies. I think there are moments where he really shines, like his first movie and Infinity War. And Ragnarok was a really fun time and I really like a lot of that movie. But for the most part, they don't seem to really know what to do with him. When in reality, he's one of my favorites over at Marvel. I just realized it feels like I'm shitting on the MCU a lot in this video, and I'm not trying to do that. I, I just feel like me specifically, a lot of the characters that I like end up kind of being done dirty or they do something weird with them. And I just, I want like another shot and I want something that would have like a platform and like a big audience like the video games. Now, you might be sitting there saying that a Thor game would just end up being a ripoff of the new God of War games. A linear story that has you hopping between worlds and fighting monsters with a weapon that comes back to you. And to that, I say, Yes, but I want more God of War. So as for the story, I think they should take another shot at bringing Jason Aaron's run to life because we all know Love and Thunder 
did not do that. Genuinely though, that run on Thor is one of the best Marvel comics out there. Gore the God Butcher is one of my favorite villains ever, and I think that the story of uncovering his murder spree and Thor coming to terms with what it means to be a god would be perfect. Maybe even fitting in Jane Foster's Mighty Thor as a second character or for a spinoff game like Spider-Man did with Miles Morales. Also, if it increases the likelihood of getting a Beta Ray Bill game, I'm all for it. The next character I want to see is Blade. Blade was created in 1973 by Marv Wolfman and Gene Colan, and he's without a doubt one of my favorite Marvel characters. Eric Brooks is a half-human, half-vampire who has honed his abilities to hunt down the undead dead and other monsters who terrorize mankind. It can take inspiration from something like Vampire the Masquerade and have some super flashy DMC type of combat using your swords and other gadgets against different types of monsters. And maybe you can explain that his vampire powers are acting up, giving him extra abilities that can expand his moveset. Whether or not it's open world, I could go either way on that. I think it would be really cool to have it set in New Orleans as opposed to New York to make it a little more distinct from other superheroes. It could have traversal and parkour gameplay, sort of like Infamous 2. Honestly, just plop him in that game. That map was basically New Orleans anyway. Oh god, they even had a vampire themed DLC. Wait, hang on a second. I think if it were to be open world, it'd be really cool to add something like what the original Watch Dogs had. Maybe the sequels had this too. I don't know. I didn't play them. Did anybody play them? But in Watch Dogs, randomly, a player could invade your game, but instead of being like a Dark Souls style PvP invasion, the player would disguise themselves as an NPC and you had to figure out who they were and take them down. And I think it'd be really fun if a player could invade your game as a vampire, pose as human, and you had to track them down and find them in time. Also, Morbius. Everybody laugh. I really like superhero stuff that leans into the more horror elements. I think introducing Blade in that section of the world builds out the universe far more than just something like Aliens or Supervillains does. Give me more characters like Blade, Ghost Rider, Mephisto, Man-Thing. Okay, now that I think about it, maybe this is a Halloween video. Well, fuck it. Then in that case, the next character I'd want to see is less of a character and more of a storyline, and that's Marvel Zombies. The original Marvel Zombies was created in 2005 by Robert Kirkman and Sean Phillips, and it was about, well, Marvel, but zombies. I don't, I don't really know what I expected. Marvel Zombies is brutal. It doesn't pull any punches with your favorite characters, and there's just this ever-present feeling of dread and darkness, and that's what makes it so much fun. Now, I don't know how well it would work as like a full-on game, but I actually think that a Marvel Zombies standalone DLC mode will be perfect for a game like Spider-Man or Wolverine, where the world gets infected with zombies, or you get sent to Earth Z, and you have to fight them off in an alternate story mode, sort of like the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead Redemption. God, I loved Undead Nightmare so much. It was so much fun, and I was so upset that they didn't do it again for Red Dead 2. Just like, oh my god, what a cool fucking concept. Now, now that I mentioned Marvel Zombies, there's actually kind of a funny story. This isn't confirmed or anything, so, you know, take this with a grain of salt. But apparently, Marvel as a company won't let anybody use Zombie Spider-Man. Not in any games, not any movies, not any comic crossovers. Dan Slott wanted to use him for the original Spider-Verse, but for some reason, he wasn't allowed to. Maybe it's because Spider-Man is basically the face of the company. Again, I have no idea if it's true, you know, watch zombie Spider-Man be like a suit for the new Spider-Man game in like a week and I'm just gonna end up looking stupid. But like, as it says right now, there's something going on. There's something fishy going on, right? And to round out this spooky Halloween video, the last Marvel character that I think deserves a game, perhaps the most horrifying of them all is Howard the Duck. Wait, what? Howard the Duck was created in 1973 by Steve Gerber and Val Mayeric and is an anthropomorphic duck from another dimension who finds himself in the Marvel Universe. I would love it if a game took inspiration from Chip Zdarsky's run on the character, which had him running Howard T. Duck private investigations out of New York. I feel like everything I talk about always leads back to Chip Zdarsky in some way. Uh, but that's not a bad thing in my eyes. That run was a whole lot of fun and I'd really love to lean into the like the private eye concept. It could have the same like comic cell shaded aesthetic as The Wolf Among Us with detective and investigation mechanics like L.A. Noir. The story could be Howard taking on different cases all while uncovering some deeper cosmic mystery that just gets bigger and bigger. Detective games are really interesting in the ways that they try to gamify investigations. There's always like a really difficult balance to strike where you don't want to overdo it and make it like super gamified. Like you don't want to go Danganronpa with this. Danganronpa is a lot of fun. I love Danganronpa, but like there's... Jesus Christ. But you also don't want to make it just like a multiple choice answer either. And in that same vein, I think that comedy and satire in games is also a difficult balance to walk. You don't want to erase what makes a character special, but at the same time, you don't want to overdo it and make it age poorly and just like make it a bunch of cringe, you know? I'm looking at you, Deadpool game. And depending on what the direction of this greater Marvel gaming universe is, it could have cameos from Insomniac Spider-Man and Wolverine and maybe introduce characters like She-Hulk and Jessica Jones into the universe and really build out that version of New York. Now, it's very easy to sit here on my stupid Halloween set and say, that I want to see this type of game for this type of character or whatever. And I don't mean to imply that it's in any way easy to make a video game, especially one of AAA size and caliber. I've had people say that I think that and I absolutely don't and I, I want to make that abundantly clear. In all honesty, I would actually really like to see more lower budget Marvel games of a smaller scale. But these are just some fun ideas for ways that we can immerse ourselves in the Marvel Universe, as well as showcase how wide and varied Marvel truly is outside of what we might know from the movies. But what Marvel characters do you want to see get their own game? This was only a few that I had in mind. If you want me to make another video talking about some more ideas, let me know down below 
below. And if you liked this video, be sure to like button and subscribe. And so the good old algorithm can recommend it to more people. Special links to 21 Escalators, Alta the Sting, Anz, Cabbage Boy, Calamari 13, Cassidy, Caroline Brenneman, Chicken McDoofus, Cook C, Cosmic Tragedy, Deco PY, DJ Ricky Oeat, Egan McFarlane, Eden Kenna, Iron Ninja, Jake Selig, Corey's Not Fresh, Murin09, Pencil Fan, Tim Newfeld, Troy says Bio Rager is lame, Tyler Goodrich, Jesh Kapoor, Zachary Stonebreaker, and Zero to Hero 148 for being spectacular fanboys on my Patreon. This has been Troy Boy 17 coming at you live. Be responsible, free Palestine, and I'll see you around.